with a population of approximately 1.4 million people here in Trinidad and Tobago, many are suffering in different corners of the country. This is why at 9 p.m. every night, we have a prayer for the nation. Hello, friend, a special good night to all of you. Once again, we are going to do this great crying out on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago. If you can, stand up, please. If you have a glass of water, hold it in your hands. I'm going to pray for the country and also I'm going to pray for you. Close your eyes. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, my Lord, I pray and I ask you, I cry now to you on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago. My Lord, I cry now to you because you are the only one that has the power to stop with the crime, to stop with the murders. My Lord, the numbers of murders up to this morning, it was in 254. My Lord, 254 people, they lost their lives because of a crime. In the number, my Lord, the numbers is still increasing. In the authority of the nation, they lost the control. Oh, my God, I pray and I ask you for you to stretch your powerful hands to stop with this evil that have been killing, that have been destroying many people's lives here in Trinidad and Tobago. Besides, my Lord, of the crime, we have domestic violence. We have as well so many people that they are unemployed. So many people that they cannot provide to their families. My Lord, we have people living on the street because they don't have a proper place to stay. So many beggars, so many homeless. Oh, my Father, Trinidad and Tobago is in need of your help. And I ask you, my my Lord, remember us, remember our country, remember our nation. My Lord, come down here with your power and bring a total transformation, a total restoration to Trinidad and Tobago. Some years ago, this country wasn't like that, but we cannot, my Lord, look backwards. We must look forward in the best way, my Lord, for us to have a peaceful place, a peaceful land, the best way way, my Lord, for us to have a peace, for us to see, my Lord, this country moving forward is when you are the number one. And my Lord, I ask you right now, be the number one of Trinidad and Tobago. My God, I surrender the authorities of this nation into your mighty hands. I pray on behalf of our Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, my Lord, give it to him wisdom, knowledge, and all the other ministers. My God, each one of the commanders Communities here in Trinidad and Tobago, I surrender to your mighty hands. My Lord, I pray and I ask you on behalf of this person that have been praying on behalf of the country, bless this person as well. Bless this person's family. Consecrate this person water for when this person drink, my Lord. Let this person to receive, my God, your power inside of them. Trinidad and Tobago, we bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and whoever believes says amen. Do you believe, friend, if God, He is the number one of Trinidad and Tobago, we are going to see great things happen to our nation. Tomorrow at nine o'clock, I'm going to be back here praying for the nation. However, at midnight, yes, tonight, a man of God is going to be here on the Actually, a man of God from Uruga is going to have a special prayer. The man of God is going to explain to you, teach you what you need to do for you to receive a total protection in your body against all kind of evil. And let me, you know, say something in advance. Get yourself ready because this coming Friday, great things is going to take place in your life. Okay? May the spirit of the living God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful night. Bye-bye. You may already know her story. My name is Francisca. I'm 37 years old. I am a film editor. She was set free from being heavily addicted to drugs. I started to do drugs on Coke. It would be easy, an eight ball a day. That's like $100 a day, $200 a day. On meth, the same way. Pills, I ate a lot of pills. She overcame suicidal tendencies. But I've overdosed several times, 
several, especially on the pills. I remember I used to eat the pills and my body had so much in it already that it, I would throw them up. Depression. Because I, I was in so much pain, I didn't know how to stop. I was tired, but... I, you wanted, but you did not know how. Yeah, and I was scared of, I didn't want to feel the pain. That's why I was doing drugs to begin with. I didn't want to have to feel the pain that I was trying to hide. And a sentence of five to up to 99 years in prison. And even though I was in jail, even though I was locked up and I was looking at five to 99 in prison, I said, no, my God, this is not going to be my life. Her life is transformed, but her testimony was not complete. Now she is back to tell the rest of her story. My testimony was not complete because I got arrested for the second time on the charge that I was facing. I was sentenced for eight years to deferred probation on a fraud charge because me and a friend of mine were running scams trying to make a dollar or two just to feed our drug addiction. So I was arrested. They found 50 IDs on me that we were using and in the scam. And they charged me with first degree fraud. Carrying, the sentence was carrying five to 99 years in prison. Um, because I did not have a record per se, they said, well, we'll give you eight years deferred. You have to pay off the $50,000 restitution that was owed to the store that I was scamming. And then we will let you off without a record. So, but if I did not pay it off, then I would end up doing those eight years deferred and they would give me another eight years to pay it off, pay off the restitution and have a felony on my record. But at that point, if I still did not pay that remaining balance, they were gonna send me to prison to work off the rest of the money that I was owed. Because I was using people's identification fraudulently, um, I couldn't be trusted. I could not be behind a cashier, a cash register. I couldn't work in a post office. I couldn't work anywhere where there's people's identification. Every time I turned around, I had to go see my probation officer. I had to come up with money that I didn't have to pay my probation. So that was a huge weight on my shoulders. I still was like, man, almost $48,000, $50,000 I have to come up with. How am I gonna do this, Lord, in four years? How am I gonna do this? Through coming to the University Church, I started doing, like, we have the campaign of Israel. I did the campaign twice um, for my probation because I said, God, you have to make a way because you have transformed every area of my life, and now this probation is still here. So I would come revolted during those campaigns, and I would put everything I had on the altar. The money that I was putting on the altar was for my monthly probation fees. So whatever I was supposed to pay that month, I would put on the altar during the campaign. Whatever I had saved aside, I would put on the altar for the campaign because I was like, look, I'm not going to pay this month's probation. And if probation wanted to, they could have violated me right then and there for not paying that month. But instead, I took that money that was for the probation and I put it on the altar. And I said, all right, God, so here is my trust. I'm putting my trust in you because instead of going to pay what I should be paying with this money, I'm going to put it on the altar and I'm going to test you and see. And when I tell you God is great, he is great. He is amazing. He did it. He made a way, and now, thank you, God. Thank you. Now, my restitution is paid off in full, so now I don't have to worry about that burden hanging over my head any longer. So standing here today, I feel relieved. I feel free. I feel light. God has blessed me in more ways than I could ever even imagine possible for somebody who I was back then. So now my family is restored, which is amazing. My family trusts me. They rely on me. They enjoy my company. They actually invite me places and want me to be around. I don't have cravings for drugs anymore. I have no cravings for that world anymore. To go out, you know, robbing and stealing and running the streets. I have no desires for any of that stuff anymore. My finances, oh my gosh. They don't even get me started with my finances. I can't believe, I have a bank, in it, bank account. I've never had a bank account with money in it before. God has blessed me with an amazing job. And it's not even like a job, it's a career. It's something that I can grow into. Very thankful to God. And I'm also grateful to the Universal Church for teaching me how to fight and conquer 
the obstacles that are in my path and be able to conquer the things that I want to accomplish in my life. The Campaign of Israel in the Valley of Decision.